So now that we've looked at some more straightforward examples of how the ASM works and how simplifying on the ASM works step by step, let's uh, take a look at one of the main motivations for why we even introduced the ASM, and that is this idea of mutability. So remember in OCaml, everything is immutable by default. Immutable meaning that uh, it cannot be changed. But we've introduced this idea of uh, records, right? And a record, remember, uh, just has some fields, some named fields. And a record can have mutable fields, meaning that the fields themselves can uh, be changed. So let's look at this example. We have this type point, and uh, the point record has two fields. It has an X and a Y. Now, if you think of a point on a Cartesian plane, you might want that point, you might want to change the, the, the X and Y position of that point. Uh, so the way that you do that is you declare that X and Y are both mutable. You put this mutable keyword in front of them, and what that accomplishes is that signals to OCaml that these are two values that will be able to be uh, mutated in the heap in place. So the way that you would show something uh, like a point on the abstract stack machine, let's say for example that you had uh, the following point, we can see how we would represent this on the heap. This is a non-primitive data type. We can see right here we're defining it. It's non-primitive, so that means that it's stored on the heap. So somewhere on the heap, we will have a double entry cell. So you have one, uh, one row for each of the fields. So in this case, we have an X field and a Y field. But because these are mutable fields, as we know from that mutable keyword, uh, you, you denote that by drawing an extra box. So you have a double box where each of the values go. So where both are one, you have one and one. And the reason that you do that is to denote uh, that this value on the heap is mutable. It can be changed. So that later on in the code when you see something like this, which is saying give p1.x90, you can, because it's double boxed, go into p1.x on the heap and change that value to be 90. Let's also just review how you would read something like this in English. Let p1, which is a point, be a uh, record, a point, with x equals 1 and y equals 1, and then later you say give p1.x90, because it's of type unit, it's doing something. When you see type unit, you're telling the console imperatively do something, as opposed to just presenting it with code that you want it to simplify into a value. When you see unit, think do it. Unit, do it. Give p1.x90. So let's actually go through an example on the abstract stack machine. Right, let's do it. Let's simplify it. What do you do at any step in an ASM simplification? You look at the leftmost expression, you get it ready, and then you simplify it. You push it to the stack, or, or what have you. Uh, so in this case, our leftmost expression is this let expression here in the first line. Remember that a let expression is ready when whatever is after the equal sign is a value. So what we have to do is make this record a value. We need to allocate that in the heap. So we underline it, saying that we're getting ready to allocate this record. And then in the heap here, we'll put uh, the double entry cell. We have x, we have y, exactly what we drew in the last slide. Uh, it's the same record. Remember, we put the mutability boxes. Because if you look in the typed up definition, both are declared as mutable with that keyword. And both get value 1. And then what you can do is point to it in the heap directly from the workspace. You could take it out of the workspace, like so, and then just where it is in the workspace, just point to that in the heap. So it was right there, so you could just point to it from there. This let expression is ready, because it's on the right, it's pointing to a value in the heap. So we underline it, and then we push it to the stack. And we, we, we push it by making a P1 binding in the stack, and then in the right side, it points to it in the heap. So then we can get rid of the line in the workspace. And we can keep going. Next line, another let expression. And when is let ready? When whatever is after the equal sign is a value. Now, uh, p1 is not yet a value explicitly. 
Uh, so we need to see what it is. Let's look up P1 in the stack. Remember, look up. Stack is a LIFO structure, so you go from the bottom up. You look up. So going from the bottom up, we uh, find P1, and we find that it is indeed this record. So in this case, we do exactly what we did before in the let declaration, uh, and that is in order to simplify this, we allocate the record in the heap. So we take it off the workspace, and now having looked up P1's value, we can just have it point to that value in the heap. Now this is, again, important. It points to the heap, not to the stack. Nothing ever points to the stack. It always points to the heap. So this is uh, illustrating also this idea of aliasing. P1 and P2 are aliases of each other because they're pointing to the same exact location in the heap. So now this let expression is, is ready. So we can uh, make a binding on the stack and then take that line off the workspace. So we make P2 and we make it point to this location and we can keep going. So now that we have pushed P1 and P2, let's uh, analyze this next expression. Let ands, which is an an equal. So we need to get this whole entire expression on the right down to be a value. So the first thing that we see is this line, give P2.x17. And why am I saying that again? It's of type unit. It's a command. Look at the semicolon. It, you're doing it. Do it. Give p2.x17. So we look up p2, erase it uh, from the from the workspace now that we found its value, and then just where p2 was in the workspace, we draw an allocation arrow directly to the heap. And it's not pointing to p2 in the stack, it's pointing to it in the heap. It's pointing to the value. So now that we've looked up the value, we can now look at this entire unit command and we can assign this dot x field. To find p2.x, we follow p2's pointer all the way into the heap, and then we see p2.x is right there. So it's, uh, it's one. It's double box, which means it's mutable, which means it can be changed, which means it's okay to give p2.x 17. So we can now simplify that line on the workspace just down to, to, to a unit, because it's now been processed and we can give uh, p2.x the value of 17. So that's, that's how the unit command uh, works. And, and you can see the effect of this imperative, imperative command, a command of type unit. It's actually doing something in the heap. It's updating this value in place. This also shows us why we have these semicolons uh, in the code to, to sequence commands of type unit. My co-TA Palmer always says that in OCaml, uh, semicolons are sequencers, unlike uh, in like Java where they're they're terminators. So this semicolon is sequencing these these unit commands. This unit line once it's been processed, you can take it off the workspace, and now it, it was able to separate it from just the value of and, which is p1.x. So now we have just a simple let expression with, with p1.x on the right. Let's get this to be a value. Uh, we do the same thing we did before. We look up p1, and we find its, its value in the heap. Allocate that with the arrow from the workspace. And now we can, assign the, we can, we can find the dot .x by following the pointer to the heap. And then we see that the dot .x value is 17. So p1.x just gets replaced with 17. By the way, that's called projecting the field. So we just projected the x field. So now we just have to do this let expression, which is ready because 17 on the right of the equal sign is, is a value. So this is just making a new binding on the stack and uh, with the int value 17, int primitive on the stack. Now that it's been pushed, it's off the workspace and we're done. So if you were to get a question like this on the exam that would say show the state of the ASM after this chunk of code, this is what you would draw with these stack bindings and this on the heap, money in the bank.